Okay, so we're looking at an example that is different than the earlier ones that we were looking at because our mirror is mirrored on the outwardly curved side. So this side is the mirrored side. The focal point and the center of curvature are actually behind the mirror and there's no way light actually gets to them. So we're going to be using our ruler, my, my ruler looks like that of course, to have to line a lot of things up. Remember, this type of mirror, this outwardly curved surface, convex mirror, is a diverging mirror. So that means that when light comes in, it is always going to be, let's say this is our optical axis, it is always going to be reflected away from the optical axis. So keep that in mind. So we start with our object and we're going to do our parallel ray first, uh, which is what we usually like to do. So we're going to come in from the tip of the object parallel and strike the mirror. Now, we have a choice to make here, of course. So the light comes in this way. Parallel rays are supposed to go, quote, through the focus, but there's no way because the focus is behind the mirror that it's actually going to go through the focus. But what we can do is line up our ruler with this point here, let me see if I got an arrow to point with here. We'll use this. So we're going to line up one, whoops, boom. There we go. We're going to line up this point where it strikes the mirror, and our, the other side of our ruler is going to be lined up with the focal point. So, don't need to. Let's try to do that. So boom. Now, this is what I have to do. This takes me a little, this is actually harder for me with this thing than it is with you with an actual ruler. But that's uh, pretty darn good for the first shot. Um, so, if I'm you, I line up my ruler like this, and then I draw a line from here out this way. Now, why I, we have it lined up, we might as well do this as well. Your eye is going to be making a virtual image. This is your standard, what I call shoplifting mirror, in the sense when you look into it, you see a smaller virtual image of yourself. So while we have the thing lined up, let's take a moment because your eye is going to trace this back like so. So while the light doesn't actually come from behind the mirror, your brain thinks it does. Right, and that's our parallel ray. Now we'll go with our chief, or center ray. Right, once again, we're going to need the ruler because the center isn't a place we can actually get to, that the light can actually get to. So we line up our ruler here. And with the tip of our object this time. So the light is going to leave the tip of the object, head towards the center, but instead of getting to the center, it's going to hit the mirror and bounce straight back where it came from. You'll have to forgive me if I'm a little off there, but I think we'll be okay. Let's do this. Close enough. Once again, however, your brain if you'll notice, when you look at these, let's do this real quick. If you look at this and this, they are definitely not going to meet out here in the real world. So your brain's going to see them and approaching it and trace them back inside your, your wee little brain there, or giant awesome brain. I don't have you want to you know, view yourself. That's up to you. And trace it back this way. Now notice they cross. So we have a good indication, if we trust ourselves here, as to where our image is going to be and what it's going to look like. So really, to make a good ray diagram at this point, our goal is to make our last ray meet there as well. Probably the trickiest one is the um, focal ray. 
So the focal ray is going to leave the tip of the object and head towards the focus. And yet again, will not actually reach the focus. So we have to line up our ruler between the tip of the object and the focal point. like so. So it's going to come in headed towards that focal point, but eh, hit the mirror before it ever gets a chance. And now it might not be a bad idea at this point in this case to remove your ruler because it's going to tempt you to do something that is a common mistake. And the mistake is people trace this line back. But this is the inline. This is when it comes in, it leaves parallel. Remember, fo it heads towards the focal point or through the focal point, it hits the mirror, it'll come out parallel. So it comes out like so. All right, so now I trace, this is the one that your eye sees right here. And so your eye is going to trace that back. And uh, close enough, they all meet right here. Make a big enough dot, it all works. Oh, that's not what I wanted you to do. There we go. Make a big enough dot, we're good. So our image characteristics, well, our image is going to be virtual. There's a couple clues to that. First of all, it occurs behind the mirror in a place that doesn't, where light can't get to. Second of all, if you have to trace lines back, like you see here, if you have to trace those back, then you're creating a virtual image. Also, it's upright, right? And since it's upright, that's also a good sign that it's a virtual image. So we have a virtual upright, because it's pointed the same way as the object was, in this case, up. And it is, uh, we'll say, reduced, right? The object was this big. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten blocks. This one's only one, two, three, four, a little over five. So it is reduced. And there you go. That's a diverging mirror. It is the only ray diagram for a diverging mirror. There's no, doesn't matter where you put the object, you will always get a virtual upright reduced image. But the key is, it gives you, for this case, the practical use for these is a wider field of view. You can see around corners, you can see your blind spot in your car, you can see the you know, 12-year-old kid stealing the candy bar, all that stuff. Not that I've ever done that. All right. Thank you.